I am lose the butts. All right, now we're going to get into Romans this morning on this new year. It so, feels so weird not being in John, but I am excited to bring um, uh, this to you this morning. We are going to have communion after, after service uh, this morning. Again, this is uh, a new year. We have five Sundays in January. We're going to have a Sunday night singing on the 29th, um, which is, oddly enough, it's me and Melissa's 18th wedding anniversary. She has put up with me for 18 years. It is. The odds, takers, the odds makers take a beating again on that. Praise God. Um, so, are you guys ready? Ready for Romans? Ready to bring it? I, I'm so excited to bring this book to you. And uh, I, what I want to do this morning <coughs> is just lay the groundwork. Okay? We're going to go through seven verses, but it's going to be just basically the intro the, hi, my name's Paul, and this is what I'm doing, okay? And then we'll get into more of the teaching and, 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 and the theological depths of, of Romans uh, later. But let's go ahead and go to the Lord in prayer, and then we'll, we'll start. Lord, we love you. We thank you for this morning. We thank you for a wonderful year in 2022. And Lord, I say that, and there's, it may not have been that way for a lot of people may have been a tough year. It may have been a year where they've experienced loss or they experienced uh, different issues of different kind, whether it's uh, physically or emotionally or, uh, you know, or monetarily, whatever. It's 22 has been a tough year. But, Lord, right now over this congregation, this church family, I pray blessings and favor just like the song we sang. And, Lord, we pray for a, a banner year. Um, at Western Heritage Cowboy Church, but even deeper than that, we pray for a banner year inside every home of this church body. Lord, that they grow in your, your faith and their faith in you and their knowledge of you this year like never before. And Lord, like we watch the video, whatever may be keeping us from serving you to the, to the level that we need to be, I pray that that is revealed to us and removed from our our, our lives, Lord, that we can serve you and be, uh, Lord, genuine and true, Lord, in our commitment to, to you. Lord, I pray for health and favor in everything that we, we touch and do and say, and God, that you are always with us, Emmanuel, as we studied last, last few weeks. Lord, also this morning, I pray for clarity. Lord, I pray as we open up this new book in Romans, God, that you're glorified. Condition the hearts of every man here, every woman here, Lord, that they can receive your word. Lord, they can put it on the tablets of their hearts that they may not sin against you. God, I, I pray for their hearts to be ready to receive. God, our prayer is that as it is every week, that as we learn more about you, we fall more in love with you. Give us this time together. In Jesus' name, everyone said. Amen. All right. And we're off. This is Romans. It was written uh, around 57 A.D., possibly 55 A.D., and Paul is the one that wrote it, and he's an apostle, even though he wasn't one of the 12, right? What makes him an apostle is the Damascus Road experience. What you had to be to be an apostle was to be in the presence of Jesus. And Jesus commissioned you to do a job. And that's exactly what happened with Paul. Okay? So as we look at the time and who wrote it, so we're about 25 years away from the cross. A lot is changing. The church is being established. Thousands were added to daily. And there's been missionary journeys throughout Rome. And throughout the glacial region, Macedonia, all right, Greece, and then and, all, and so now we see who it was written to. It was written to Roman Christians, not very much different than the book of Galatians in the theory and the thought process of the writing Paul is writing because the Christians can't figure out the freedom that is in Jesus Christ. For some of the Jewish Believers that have accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, they just can't let go of the old ways. 
the old traditions, the way things used to be, the way their grandparents did it before Jesus shows up on the scene. Why can't we keep this Sabbath, right? Why can't we, you know, worship on Saturday in the synagogues? And why can't we, you know, have, have the ritualistic things that we are so used to and accustomed to? Well, there's Jesus did away from that. Jesus was the ultimate sacrifice. Jesus is the great high priest. There is no need for a high priest anymore. He is all sufficient, right? And so Paul is writing into that. Again, if you want a kind of a cliff note to this, read the book of Galatians. We studied it on Wednesday night. The whole thing's online at our church website, if that's something you want to do. But he's writing it because not only there's the, there's the Christians, the G- Gentile Christians like you and I, right? And then there's the Jewish Christians. And the Jewish Christians are trying to tell the Gentile Christians how to be Jews, right? And the Gentiles are kind of in this, like, what do we need that for? Like, whom, whom the sun sets free is free indeed. So why do we need to go back to the, your custom? So Paul's writing into some of that, but I also want to set the stage for, for kind of where things are, okay? <clears throat> so if you can see on the map, Antioch over here, this is where Paul was commissioned to go on the missionary journeys to the west, okay? So, excuse me. So you got Cyprus down here, but Galatians, Paul was, wrote Galatians, but they believe he was in Antioch when he wrote Galatians, and he wrote it to this region right here, the glacial region, right? So if you keep on going to Colossia, that's Colossians, okay? You keep on going into this area here, that's Asia Minor. You get Ephesus, right? That's where um, he wrote 1 Corinthians, Right now, if you keep on going into Macedonia region, you get Philippi and Thessalonica, Philippians and Thessalonians. All right, but into this region here is where he wrote Second Corinthians, First Timothy, and Titus. Titus again, we believe, was actually written maybe down in here, but it was written to to this Crete island here, on the on the on the bottom there. All right, and now we continue into Corinth. Um, would you get the book of Corinthians, First and Second Thessalonians? Again, he's writing to the Thessalonica up here, these two letters. And then Corinth is where he wrote the book of Romans. Right? Paul, again, is the one that's contributed to most to the New Testament as far as his, his writings and his letters. And here in Rome, okay, you have these four... Um, Epistles, uh, Ephesians, Colossians, Philemon, and Philippians. And these were written while he was in prison in Rome. All right, and then you have 2 Corinthians. I've marked out Hebrews because they that's where they think Paul wrote Hebrews, but there's no real confirmation that Paul wrote Hebrews. The language is similar. There's a lot of, you know, things that say, yeah, he may have done it, but there's just no clear, decisive um, view on that through through theologians. So that's kind of the layout of, of the writings of Paul and where he was writing again, 50 to 65, all right? And Jerusalem is down here for you guys that are trying to figure out, kind of get a lay of the land. But he was commissioned out of Antioch, Syria, to go on those mission journeys, all right? So let's explain a little bit about what Rome was going through at the time. At 37 A.D., a few years after the death, burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, um, is believed to be the most evil man that ever lived. And he was an emperor in Rome. And his name was Nero. He got the throne at the age of 17 years old, which always makes a lot of sense to let a 17-year-old kid ruin your country, right? Right? I have a 17-year-old son. He can't clean his room. I don't need him running the country. Okay? Um, he was maniacal. He was just absolutely epi- the epitome of evil. Um, his brother had a better singing voice than him, so he poisoned his brother. Okay? Just that's the kind of guy he was. He murdered 
and murdered and murdered. He killed his mother just because they had a disagreement. You believe that? Just because they had a difference of opinion, and he kills her. He goes around throughout the town, eavesdropping on people, thinking, trying to figure out his, because he's an egotistical maniac, just what the people think of him. And when he hears someone say something bad about him, he finds him, marks that guy, and then he is captured, killed, and never heard from again. The height of his evilness, and again, well, guys, we could talk about the parallels with America in this, but they're very poor. There's no middle class in Rome. You're either very poor, you're very rich, and there's no in-between. All right? So you, the, the poor work for the rich, and uh, they have to go and conquer and, and, and plunder over other uh, countries and things like that just to bring stuff back to the poor. It's where we have abortion in our nation, which is certainly a, a, a real big topic of, of discussion. They didn't have abortion, but they, didn't, they did it even maybe even more inhumanely. They would take a child and just throw it in a lake. Or they would take a baby and they would just leave it in a ditch all over the town. It was an evil, dark, dark place. And Paul is writing into the Roman Christians. At the height, again, as I was telling you, at the height of his evilness, which was his undoing, he wanted to basically remodel Rome. He didn't like the way it looked. So he, and they, they, they kind of vary on this because um, some people think it wasn't him. But they set, basically set a blaze to Rome. Like 75% of the Roman city was burnt to the ground. And after, after it was burnt to the ground, they were saying, some people said he was... Um, you know, instrumental in helping them uh, get, get, you know, supplies and things like that. Others say he went around with torches in his hand making it worse. So I don't, you know, you, you do whatever your own research tells you to do. There's all kinds of stuff on Nero, okay? But at the end of the day, he needed an escape goat on who burnt down the city of Rome. So he blamed it on the Christians. He blamed it on the Christians, and at that point, Christianity was certainly blackballed, and and everyone there was a lot of killings of Christians. There was a lot of hangings. There was a lot of you know crucifixions. Obviously, of us say hangings, but crucifixions, and things like that done to um, Christians because everyone thought that they were responsible for the destruction of Rome. So, this is what Paul's writing into. And th- this stuff happened around uh, 60 A.D. Again, his, his reign was over about 64 A.D. He didn't live much longer than that. He actually committed suicide um, as they were chasing him. He slit his throat, and his dying words, I believe, were, the world has lost an artist. That's what he considered himself. The world has lost an artist who killed thousands and thousands of people. So, pretty heavy situation in Rome, wouldn't you say? Right? So this is what Paul's writing into. And and so now we're going to get into uh, just seven verses. And again, this is Paul's greeting. All right? But we'll go into it as much as we can. Paul, a slave of Christ, called an apostle, and singled out for God's good news. Let's start at the beginning. He considers himself a slave. And who's his master? Jesus Christ, right? And that's good because we know that the slaves and the mentality of a slave is they do the bidding and they do the will and they do the purpose of the master, right? That's really good. Then he could, again, we call himself an apostle. We've been through that, what makes him an apostle, and it all stands to truth. And then singled out, called out. Paul, Paul, or Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? 
Jesus calls him out on Damascus Road for God's gospel. And that's, again, the definition of good news, uh, or the gospel is good news. Right? So he's set apart for the spreading of the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ. What he promised long ago through his prophets and Holy Scripture, right? And so he, he said this is going to happen. This was going to be set apart a long time ago through Scripture and the prophets and the Holy, Holy Scriptures. Then concerning his son, I want to clarify all of this. Verse 2 is concerning his son, okay? It's not prophesied that there's going to be a, 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 a one that comes that turns. This is not, verse 2 is not about Paul. It's about concerning his son, capital H there, God's son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Again, we talked about that through the Christmas break. The name above every name is his Lord, Lord of Lords, King of Kings, right? And again, was a descendant of David according to the flesh. It's just the lineage of Jesus Christ. There's actually been... Uh, several Easter uh, services uh, where I've seen and watched and heard where they actually use Romans 1 through 7 as their Easter um, scriptures because it is verse 3. Jesus Christ, our Lord, descendant of David, uh, according to the flesh. He was in the lineage in the human side of David. And who has been declared to be powerful, son of God, by the resurrection from the dead according to the spirit of holiness. And this is his holy side. This is his godly side. He's all man. He's all God. So in the one who has been declared to be powerful, son of God, and why is he the powerful son of God? Because of the resurrection from the dead, according to the spirit of holiness. That's who Jesus is. And so Paul, again, is writing this and introducing himself and introducing who he is on in behalf of. I'm speaking on behalf of Jesus Christ through the lineage of David, through the holiness and the godliness of the Lord of, of God, right? And we have received grace and apostle, apostleship through him. This is how I became apostle, through Jesus Christ. It wasn't one of the 11 that gave me the authority to be an apostle, right? That, they don't have the authority to make Paul an apostle. It came from Jesus Christ on Damascus Road, right? I received grace. How did he receive grace? Because he could have, Jesus could have killed him. He was persecuting Christians. Out of all the people, right? He says himself, I was chief sinner. I was the one that, that it was there when they stoned Stephen in Acts. If you want a timeline of what's going on here, you go to Acts 20. That'll put you right around the writings of Romans. All right? So, he's received grace uh, through Jesus Christ who, who, who gave him, not only uh, didn't kill him, but also gave him spiritual freedom that he didn't know was there. Right? He set, set Paul free. He gave Paul a new identity. Right? Through that grace. Right? And then bringing about the obedience of faith among all the nations. My missionary job and my missionary journey is to bring obedience to all this region. Galatia, Macedonia, and to Rome, Greece, all of these areas. Syria, Jerusalem, continue to go through that area. So, He's saying that was my mission to bring about obedience of faith. Of faith. On who? On behalf of His name. Capital H. Jesus Christ. On His name I was bringing the obedience of faith. Last two verses of the morning. And I wanted this to be brief because I, want, I know a lot of people still have family in and, 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 and have traveling and this, that, and the other. It's New Year's. So it is a holiday, so I want to finish up these two verses, and then uh, we'll sing uh, out right away, and God bless you on our way out, right? But these last two verses, including, your, including yourself, who also belong to Jesus Christ by calling. Again, who is he writing it to? 
the ones that belong to Jesus Christ. We would know them as Christians, whether they're Jewish Christians or, 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 or Gentile Christians. Whether they were, he was writing to that purpose, and he gets into this whole theological conversation with them throughout the text. But he's setting the stage. This is who I'm writing it to. And then last verse of the morning, and both of you guys can come on up. And to all are in Rome. To all who are in Rome. Right? You're there. I want you to know this because there's going to be some people that don't need to know Jesus Christ that are, that are going, to, going to hear this letter, receive this letter. Just know that all who are in Rome are loved by God. Called as saints. And again, I think that's important just as we set a tone for 2023. I think if... if if I can, if y'all will indulge me and not to be kitschy or anything like that, but to all who are in Western Heritage Cowboy Church, to all who are hearing this this morning, you're loved by God. You need to know that. 2023, you're here, you're setting a tone for the year. You're loved by God. If, if, Paul was going to write a letter to Western Heritage Cowboy Church, I think it would be very similar maybe to this. Because if we can make the case that our nation is a mess, right? But all who are in this place, you're loved by God. Called as saints. Oh, Russ, you don't know what I did last night. <laughs> He does. And he still calls you his. He calls you a saint. Do you know what that means? It's not just the, you know, you think of all the saints like, you know, some of these Catholic saints that have gone on and these, you know, that's not, not what you read into that. What he's saying is my saints are mine. You're my beloved you're my, my, my children. You're my, my flock. You're my beloved children of God. So I, I, I didn't spend a lot of time on this verse this week because verse 7 really speaks for itself. But as I'm reading it to you right now, the impact of it is certainly heavier than I gave it credit for. The magnitude of being called saints. Grace to you and peace from God, our Father, the Lord Jesus Christ. And that is his opening letter. This opening sta statement is grace to you, peace and God uh, from God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. And that is, again, the message this morning. So as we get ready to get into communion.